There are three cutaneous nerves that supply most of the sensation of the hand and wrist that you can utilize if you need to get a wide area of analgesia. For the wrist and the hand, think about using one of these blocks if you're thinking about doing more than one digital block or if you're working in the palm or around the thumb. The first nerve that I'm going to identify is the superficial radial nerve. The superficial radial nerve runs through the anatomical snuff box, which is where my thumb is right here. And as it crosses into the hand, it divides and branches and dives deep into the hand tissue. The key about hand and wrist blocks is to go proximal to the nerve trunk before it divides and branches because if you're going distal in the hand, you're going to miss a lot of these branching nerves and you're going to get patchy, incomplete analgesia. So my landmarks for the superficial radial nerve are my anatomical snuff box, my radial styloid, and I always want to palpate my radial artery. And I want to go dorsal to that and two finger breadths above the radial styloid. So I believe this nerve trunk is right about in this location and I'm going to lay down my wheel of anesthetic in that location. For the face and the, um, for the facial nerve blocks, I usually use one to two cc's of anesthetic solution. For the wrist blocks, I usually use two to three cc's of my one to one solution of 2% plain lidocaine and half percent plain marcaine. So I've identified my anatomical snuff box, my radial styloid, I've gone two finger breadths above, I've drawn a visual access where I'm going to go, I'm going to stay very superficial, and the other thing I do is I keep my finger on the radial artery. So I'm going to go across that trunk, I'm going to aspirate, and then I'm going to lay down a wheel as I withdraw. And you can see on this patient that there's a large blue wheel right over where I think that superficial radial nerve trunk is. That is going to take out all of the dorsal web space between the first and the second metacarpal, the entire thumb, the entire thenar eminence, and half of the index finger. The second nerve that I want to talk about in the wrist and hand is the ulnar nerve. The ulnar nerve as you can imagine, lies on the ulnar side of the wrist, and it runs with the ulnar artery. So it's not dorsal, it's more palmar, towards the flexion compartment. My landmark is the, the ulnar styloid, the ulnar artery, and my nerve trunk lies right in there. So I'm going to go two finger breadths above my ulnar styloid, and I'm going to lay down that trunk right across that area where I think that ulnar trunk is most likely to lie. Technique is the same. I'm going to use two to three cc's. I've got my finger on the ulnar artery, so I'm not going to penetrate the artery. I'm going to aspirate, and then I'm going to lay down that wheel right in that area where I think that ulnar artery is. This is going to take out all of the hypothenar eminence, the little finger, the dorsal of the first metacarpal, and half of your ring finger. The last nerve in the wrist that I'm going to talk about is the median nerve. The median nerve runs through the carpal tunnel right at the middle of the wrist and at the flexion crease of the wrist that's the location of the carpal tunnel. Now remember the carpal tunnel is bony on three sides and has a very dense flexor retinaculum over the top so it's not compressible or distensible. So we want to stay out of the median nerve and the carpal tunnel. We're going to go two, two finger breadths above, and that's where I'm going to lay that down. Now, in most people who have a flexor carpi, or a, a for most people who have a uh, flexor tendon that goes into their palm, you can see that structure if you um, do this maneuver. The median nerve is just medial to that structure if they have it. 15% of you don't have it. So the procedure is the same. I feel my radial artery. I feel my radial nerve. I know where my flexion crease is. I think I know where that trunk is. 
I'm going to stay very, very superficial. I'm going to cross over where I think that trunk is. I'm going to aspirate to make sure I'm not in a vascular structure. And I'm going to lay down that wheel of my one-to-one -one solution over that median nerve, well proximal to the flexor, um, the flexor uh, crease. This nerve block is going to take out the entire central palm of your hand and the proximal parts of your second, third, and fourth digits. So think about using a median nerve block if you're working in the center of the, of the palm. Or think about using more than one of these nerve blocks depending on which anatomical area you're trying to locate. Median nerve will take out the palm and the proximal second, third, and fourth finger. Superficial radial will take out your thumb, thenar eminence, and half of the index finger. And your ulnar nerve block will take out your hypothenar eminence, fifth finger, and part of your fourth digit. Two to three cc's. Let them rub it a little bit until it sets up. The 2% plain lidocaine will help it set up quickly. The half percent plain marcaine will help it last. 